Hello all, Jamie Rogers here from Craft Mania, and today I am introducing you to our brand new die of the week. But before we get started, let's not forget to remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and tap the bell so you get notified of all of our future videos. As you can see here at Craft Mania, we are bringing you lots of new content and especially special offers like this week's die of the week, and we would hate for you to miss out on them. Now, speaking of the die of the week this week, where are we going to find this? Where can we go to get it? We're going to pop onto the Craft Mania website, which is www.craftmaniacrafts.com. When you land on the website, you will find a menu bar. It'll either go across the screen or I'll be able to drop down one if you're on a mobile device. And on that menu bar, wherever you find it, will be the little title of Die of the Week. If you give that a click, it will go through and you will see all of our recent dies of the week laid out for you, including, of course, the one which we are talking about today. Now, being honest with you, most of these sell out very, very, very quickly indeed. And we cannot always repeat them and they cannot always be around. So if you see one you like, the look of don't dilly dally get it ordered as soon as you possibly can now when we are shopping with craft mania again you might be new you might not know this if you spend over five pound your uk pmp is completely free of charge we do not charge you a penny it is sent to your door free of charge now today's dive of the week is just fractionally over that five pound threshold so of course that means you are going to receive it to your door with free pmp if you're watching from around the world and you'd like to order our goodies, then absolutely, of course, you can do. We post all around the world every single day. Your PMP internationally is capped at just £10. By that, I mean the most you will pay is £10. If we find your PMP cheaper than £10, we will refund the difference to you. If it costs more than £10, which, being honest with you, 99% of the time it does, here at Craft Mania, we will pay the difference for you. It's our way, whether we're talking UK PMP or international PMP, of keeping the costs as low as we can for you so you can spend more on the bits that matter. And that, of course, is our die of the week and all the other crafty goodies we bring you. So this week's die of the week is called Zubby. It is a frames and tags die by Sue Wilson. I know many of you have seen our frames and tags and collected several of these that we've bought you on our previous die of the week. We know when we're talking of Sue's dies, we know when we're talking frames and tags, we have lots of options, lots of ways we can use them, and they're incredible, ornate designs. Zoe comes with four dies in this set. Um, it's a beautiful die set, very ornate, and the four dies break down to be able to make it be used in many ways, whether we want to cut in, cut out, create frames, create tags, create decorations. So much we can do with this one. Now, of course, it's a die of the week, which means we bring you a fantastic saving. This die should be, its recommended retail price is $11.99. This week, we have it better than half price. It is £5.49p. And don't forget, that includes your PMP here in the UK as well. So £5.49 is all you need to pay to get this posted to you right through your door right away. Now I'm going to show you seven cards that I've created with this die to give you a bit of inspiration. Um, this week they will be appearing on the Craft Mania Facebook page every day at 2pm. We moved them over there last week. They used to be on the Jamie Rogers Crafts Facebook page, but they're now currently on holiday on the Craft Mania page. So if you would like to go on and save the images, I know a lot of you like to do that. So you've got that backup of inspiration when they arrive with you. Every day at 2pm, Craft Mania Facebook page, you will see these cards appear. All of this will be tagged for you in the description, the Facebook page, the page to go and order it from, all of the details you need. So if you're not too sure where to find these bits I'm talking about, there will be links for you in the description. So let's jump in and have a little look at what I've created, shall we, to hopefully give you a little bit of inspiration. So then, with our Zoe die, we have our four different pieces to this one. So that means we have got our outside edge. Now, this one's really important because it means that we can cut our apertures in our cardstock and then sink the rest of the items underneath them if we wish to. It means that we can put this around our next panel to cut it out and have that as a freestanding item. It also means that if we do nest these two together and cut them out and we've got this lovely filigree edge to it, we can then take this one and cut it again in another colour and place that underneath it so for all of these apertures we receive that new colour. So it just gives you quite a few options. 
We then have our intricate die. Now, because this die isn't attached to the outside of the edge, this means that this can not only go inside that one to trim out and come out as a freestanding item, it also means that we can cut this into our cardstock and it will stay there. There is no edge attached on the outside or the inside. So we could literally take this and multi-cut it into a background panel and create some really ornate, cool backgrounds. Moving down, we have our oval. Now, this again can be sort of used in conjunction with and you can use all three pieces that we've shown you so far you could cut that out and you would of course have this lovely panel with this opening in the middle that you might wish to add a little embellishment or stamp a sentiment or use in either direction to create a little frame that works really lovely also means that we have this part that we could layer on top if we was to cut that out as an oval and just place it on the top of this one we could build up a new color it also means that if we take out that outside edge again and we go to cutting this into our cardstock, we could then cut that part out and have an aperture within that filigree frame that you could then hang something in or again use as a frame if you wish to or build up. Now Sue thinks of everything and she's also given us a fourth die and this one is our lovely little patterned oval. Now this of course once again a bit like this filigree panel doesn't have an outside edge attached to it that is what this one is for so again means we can take this and we can cut it into our cardstock we can multi-cut it if we wish to also means we can place it onto the inside of this one and we can cut that out as a more filigree panel whether we choose to use the outside edge with it or not but it also of course means that we can take it with this oval place the two together cut that out and layer it on top of these panels once you've started cutting those and building them up so that's just a brief overview of what four dies actually means. What can we achieve with having these four items? As you can see, in my opinion, there's quite a lot of options there. I'm no mathematician, but that's got to add up to quite a lot of ways in which we can play around with these. So I've done seven cards to tease you with today or to tempt you with or to inspire you with. But to be honest, this is one of them dies that you could create hundreds of cards and still have ideas to go with. So this one, I have used some of our Seashell Blue Elite cardstock. I've cut it out using the filigree frame, the outside edge and the oval. So I've left out of this system, this plain oval. So that stays attached. I've then used the filigree frame with the outside edge and cut the white panels to go beneath them. So you can see here, if we give this a little lift, the white panels match perfectly with the blue ones, but I've left the middles solid so that we've got that white oval inside underneath this panel. You can also see that I've chose to use two of them as sort of a crossways and one as a vertical, adding on some forget-me-not flowers and a little butterfly. In the background, I've used our diamond stencil and I've embossed it. I love this stencil. It gives such a cool emboss detail. So I've just sent that through with a rubber mat in my machine to emboss that onto the cardstock. It's one of the, uh, I, I even want to call it a folder. It's not a folder, it's a stencil. But it's one of the stencils I keep reaching for time and time again to do embossing with because I think it looks so cool. And it truly does look like I've used an embossing folder when in reality all I've used is a stencil. So we're saving a few pennies. Now, I haven't mentioned this, have I? All of the bits we talk about, the pearls, the butterflies, the flowers, the cardstock, the stencils, they will all be on that same page I mentioned on YouTube. So if you like the look of these bits and you want to know where to find them, once again, head onto the website, have a little look on the de dedicated page. You'll find everything in one place. Now this time you can see I've bought in that same stencil. I'm a little bit addicted to that one, aren't I? Bought in the same stencil to emboss my white here. This is our Polar White Elite cardstock. And this time what I've done is I've stepped down on each level by cutting different pieces. So for the first level, the one that we've embossed with a stencil, I've just cut this one to create that opening. On the next one down, I have used this one and this one so that I create this opening with this filigree frame around the edge of it. On the next one down, we've left this one out, but we've kept this one and we've popped this one into the center of it and we've cut that out. And that creates this base layer. So again, you might be able to see this if I give you a little twist we can see that this filigree frame is running through our layers, but it means that we can then frame pad them together and give this depth, give this really cool effect. I've added on a little butterfly just to finish this one off, but this could be dressed up for so many different occasions all throughout the year and added on a little with love down in the corner just to finish that project. Moving on. So we mentioned that we can take these elements, we can cut them into our cardstock and we can leave them there. I love this style of card. I love it so much that when I created it, I didn't actually want to cover it up. And the most I could bring to add on was a happy birthday. But this again could be just about any different topic you want to place on there. All I did was took a square of card, which actually started off as a 
it's our mint green i think we call it meadow grass green if i remember rightly from our elite range and i took these dies and i took this part and this part so i left out both of the outside edges we don't need those took these two pieces and i cut them going in towards each other then down towards each other and then in from each of the corners and just carried on sending that through my machine to create this really cool background it's certainly not perfect there's a couple of little issues with it and in one place which where it went wrong i actually ended up getting some like oil off of my machine onto the card so my minty greeny shade suddenly become blue and that is because i used one of our elite misters the night sky navy and i just misted all over it and i tell you this because this looks like i've just used our elite um night sky navy cardstock that's what i was going to say looks like i've just used that to begin with but it's nice to know that sometimes things do go wrong don't they we get a fingerprint we get a, a smudge we get some ink we get some oil we get a bit of mess transfer off of a cutting plate or a mat or something and so many times you think oh well, that's it i'm not going to use that panel now well an elite mister is a great way to mist over the top of it cover up those marks and make it look like a fresh piece of cardstock so all i did was just mist over it and then dried it i then popped it onto a self-adhesive sheet and i've placed over the top of that some of our mineral mica and this was the grand perla one so it just gives this cool like gritty shimmer it's a bit like a glitzy sand i know that's probably a bit of a weird description but it's a really lovely texture and gives a bit of sparkle a bit of a diamond esque sparkle to it so very easy to do very fun to do then we move on to our next card now this is something else i you know i, I shouldn't confess all of my sort of current addictions but this corner stamp is one that has won my heart. Um, I absolutely love it. And I keep going back to it time and time again. I know if you follow the Jamie Rogers Crafts Facebook page, you're going to see a lot of cards coming up in the next week or so where you're going to see this detail stamped into the, the corners on uh, panels and then in all different sizes in different projects. Something I've got a bit carried away with doing. So this one, I've done exactly that. I've stamped it. I've coloured it with alcohol markers. I've put a ribbon around the middle and I've added some pearls to the top of it. I've then taken our die of the week. I have cut the background panel out of gold mirror card. I've cut the oval out of gold mirror card and then nesting them back together. I've used these pieces and I've cut those out of white card stock and then I've got them to layer back together with some foam tape in the middle to give that dimension. I've also added on one of our classic poinsettias, which hopefully you can see the lovely deboss work that that die does as it cuts. And I've added in a couple of our foliage pieces to finish that one off. So again, very quick, very simple, very easy. This week on my Facebook page, I asked how many um, Christmas cards people have been making. And there's a few who have done quite a lot, obviously, but there's quite a few of you who I know have barely even started. And I like to think that sometimes simple little cards like this can be the sort of mojo kick that we need and the catch up that we need to be able to get you sort of back up to where you should be or might need to be with your Christmas makes if you're like me and have an awful lot to make. Moving on, keeping this one again, we're very quick, very simple today, nothing complicated. This time we have gone for the lace border stamp. I've stamped it in black, I've matched it up. It was a perfect match, but I decided that I'd actually use the middle part where the match was to add on my lovely die set. So just like the last one, I've cut those two this time again out of white, and I've cut just the background pieces out of black, and then I've layered the two together with a bit of foam tape between them. Added on one of our lace sentiment stamps onto one of our flags, and that finishes off that card. Moving on to our next one, and I'm just gonna give this one a little bit of a fluff up because my butterfly has gone a little bit um, flat. I don't think you're gonna see this one too well. I, th I think this card's much better actually in reality than you see it on screen or you see it in a photo and that often happens, doesn't it? But I love the way that this butterfly holds its depth and really comes to life and gives you that little point of difference. This time, I because I, I do different things when I do the die of the week to what I actually normally do when I'm crafting. And when I do the die of the week, I tend to take the die I'm gonna be working with and I go through and I try and roughly plan out the seven cards I'm going to create and I cut the pieces for them before I do anything else, before I do any of the backgrounds or the, the flowers or even know really where I'm going with them. And I put a post up on our group actually, our Create with Craft Mania and Jamie Rogers post group, sorry, put a post on there the other day saying to you, that this is actually a bit of a sneaky behind the scenes. These are the pieces I've laid out ready to, to make my seven cards. And the eagle-eyed amongst you might notice that this panel actually, when we were talking about that, that was photographed in the mint green I was talking about. And these pieces, the butterfly and the background panel, I think they were the light blue. I believe they were the seashell blue. 
But I decided I'd go back to the Night Sky Navy. So I've misted over these with the Night Sky Navy just to match in with the Night Sky Navy cardstock. And again, done very similar to what we just spoke about, cutting these out and layering them up. I've also used the Night Sky Navy in the background to go over our lovely Kaleidoscope Butterfly Stencil. I've added on our Forget Me Not Flowers and I've added on our Regal Corners and just finished that one off with a little sentiment. But I do love that way that you can cut and then if you change your mind, mist over it again. A bit like when I mentioned about me oil spill, it's nice to have a backup plan for if you haven't quite got the cuts in the colours you want them to be. Then on to our last card. This is the number seven for this week. So this time I have gone for using this as a landscape instead of a portrait, which I haven't done much of, but I chose to do it this way and I've used the outside edge, the filigree panel and the oval to trim that one out. I've then cut the oval out of white and stamped my sentiment onto it. And from this piece, which is done in our bubblegum cardstock, I've then foam padded onto my background and added on a little ribbon to look like it's held and suspended in place. I've then bought in Rodney. Now Rodney is flying out the door. I know so many of you have bought Rodney already. If you haven't already fallen in love with Rodney, you are seeing so much inspiration from me, our design team, and our fellow crafters on the crate with Craftmania and Jamie Rogers page, that I think Rodney's becoming quite a bit of a bit of a, a, a fashion, if you like, a bit of a, a leader in our craft in this Christmas. And I, this is just one of my quick makes with him because I think he's absolutely lovely to work with. And I've used some alcohol markers to colour him in, intentionally going for quite a vintage colour scheme. I coloured Rodney before I even started with this and I knew where I was going to go. I coloured Rodney a couple of days ago before I even knew of the dye of the week. And it was when I started building these together and pre-cutting my seven cards I, I noticed this and thought well, actually this bubblegum card goes really nicely with the one I've already coloured I've also used some of my clear dry glue just gone across the bottom of this panel gone across the bottom of the snow and on Rodney's little bubble and added over some diamond sprinkles to give a bit of a snowy finish to it you'll also notice snowflake st um, stencil used in the background again embossed for our machine with a rubber mat to give that little bit of texture to it so hopefully that gives you seven very different ideas that go across very different themes, very different styles, and just shows you how this week's die of the week is going to be one you're going to be reaching for, whatever the season, whatever the occasion, for many, many moons to come. If you've got any questions, if you'd like to know any details about any of the bits we've shared with you today, then please let me know in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them for you. Don't forget you can find this die and all of the goodies used on the die of the week page on the Craftmania website, which is www.craftmania.com craft.com don't forget it's also with free pmp because it's over five pounds in the uk and capped international pmp of just 10 pounds your die of the week should be 11.99 but is reduced to just 5.49 thank you very much for watching and i look forward to seeing you all again very very soon bye for now <laughs>